From Studio B at Sound Mind Recording Studios, it's The Balcony Show with your host, Ann Thatcher, The Mad Cat, and Bo Summer. We have searched the globe for the best in indie music so you don't have to. Here we go, The Balcony Show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Balcony Show. On today's show, we have Peter Donegan, the third selectee from our Reverb Nation campaign. And today's hashtag, we're going to insult you. And I'm giving Mad Cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was waiting for that. We're going to insult you. <laughs> Bing! Me! <laughs> yep. I have Shakespearean insults to prep you for your Thanksgiving holiday. So if anybody comes at you, mm-hmm. you're going to be able to come back with some style. So, oh yeah, are you ready, Mad Cat? Let's yes. throw a couple at them. Yes, 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 yes. Hey. Now, mind you, I am not quite the Shakespearean thespian <laughs> as some would imagine. <laughs> Okay, here we go. A quick jab at the ego. Right. Thou crusty batch of nature. <laughs> From Trulius Cressida. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. Thou crusty batch of nature. Yes. Who's a thou crusty batch of nature? <laughs> All right, let's see. What's this hashtag again? Shakespearean yeah. insults. Yeah. Insult this. Could you imagine? Oh, insult. This. Hey, you! That crusty batch of nature. All right, let's see. All right, what's this one? I know a bunch of those. <laughs> the the <laughs> lengthy, <laughs> eloquent synonym for idiot. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the lengthly, eloquent synonym. How to call somebody an idiot, idiot at yeah. the dinner table. <laughs> All right. Now, Ba-dum-bum. I'll just so you all know, this is in the raw. Like, I didn't previously read these. We're we're doing it together. <laughs> You're so welcome. <laughs> all right. Thou lengthy, eloquent synonym for idiot. Why, thou clay-brained guts, thou naughty, patted fool, thou whoreson, obscene, <laughs> greasy, tallow catch. <laughs> <laughs> From Henry V, part one. <laughs> Could you imagine, you like you're sitting there eating your dinner, and 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 like somebody says something stupid, goes into this, you know, <laughs> why? <laughs> you gotta admit, I think it would you, be I, good. I think you you can probably can just get somebody by thou clay brain guts, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> or just clay brained. <laughs> why <laughs> thou clay brained guts? <laughs> All right, let's see. For the group in your life. The the grump in your life. The grump? The grump in your life. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> the tautness like of his too. face spurs ripe grapes. Oh, nope. Oh. I did not say that, did right? Did you guys need glasses? See, I think I did. <laughs> right. Do you need my readers? Let's try that one more time. <laughs> the tautness of his face sours ripe grapes. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, making wine, man. From Cornholius. It's- All right. Well, we'll come back to some more of these, you yes. lucky ducks. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys need readers. <laughs> All right. We're going to get things started tonight with a song from Beamer Wiggly, Something to Do with a Girl. Take a listen and we'll be right back. When your heart's all twisted up Cause she's in your head too much If there's a skip in your step Cause you can't forget How it felt the first time you touched When you're all night on the phone Saying nothing till the break of dawn And she's sending you pics It's a temporary fix Till you get that kiss you want If your friends all say That they got a new move to wear if you're on cloud nine and feeling that high And you swear you're gonna touch the sky It's probably something to do with the girl When you're dropping that cash and driving too fast Cause you can't get enough of that It's gotta be something to do with the girl Everybody's singing now It's something to do with a girl When you're learning how to play guitar Writing 
song just to steal her heart But when you turn the game off just to turn her on And lay a blanket underneath the stars If it's good or bad If you're happy or you're sad If you're on cloud nine and feeling that high And you swear you're gonna touch the sky It's probably something to do with the girl When you're dropping that cash and driving too fast Cause you can't get enough of that It's gotta be something to do with the girl Everybody's singing now Where you're gonna touch the sky It's probably something to do with the girl Yeah, when you're dropping that cash And driving too fast Cause you can't get enough of that It's gotta be something to do with the girl Everybody's singing now It's always something on the balcony show that was beamer wiggly so now up we have a song by tonight's interviewee peter donnegan the song is called walking man so sit down give it a listen and when you come back we're going to be in the interview here we go Thinking low on what they say You've only got yourself to blame For what you cannot, cannot do When the weight's too much for you It always makes me feel so sane When I'm just walking back I'm the one who holds the key To myself, I could go free I'm the one who must find a way If I'm to live another day It all feels like a game to me I'm just a walking man Just walking, man. Hope is in the distance. Love feels far away. Truth in every hour. Step by step, I stumble through. I don't know where I'm going to. to Ooh, 
try to change, but I'm always stay so. I was born on a wicked day, so talk to myself in my dreams. I try, but I'm always sad. When I died, it was strange as so. I'm the best now that I can be. This now that I could be Well I'm just walking man Yeah walking man Walk. Everybody, welcome to the Balcony Show, and we are very excited because we have Peter Donegan on the phone with us, and he is our Reverb Nation Campaign Three selectee. Yay! Well, <laughs> welcome, hey, Peter. Hey, hey, guys. Well, it's it's great to be here. Thanks for thanks for having me. Well, uh, we're really excited to have you, and I uh, gotta say, we were all very impressed with your music. And um, oh, well, thank you very much. So, our listeners just heard the song "Walking" off of your album "Superman," which is uh, getting quite a bit of praise. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well, "Walking Man's off the the live album. Uh, which we did last year. Um, and I mean, two, two things I can tell you. I mean, the live album was recorded in London and we actually took over what used to be a recording studio for Decca records. Um, and it's now a rehearsal room for the English national opera house, but they haven't changed anything. It's like a time capsule inside. Um, so we took over the room, which is actually where my dad recorded his first hit back in, well, he recorded it back in 1954, but it became a hit in 56. And that was for the song rock on online, uh, which changed the British music industry. So to celebrate the 65th anniversary, we, we kind of just went in there and did that. Nice. Um, and of course, yeah, it was it was just a bit of paying homage, you know. So, um, but at the same time, I mean, we had a couple of dad's tunes on the album, um, and then many originals, including this one, which uh, was written with a couple of well, they were newfound friends uh, at a songwriting retreat in Glastonbury area in the UK, um, because I am a scholar of the Buddy Holly Educational Foundation, and they were running a, a songwriting retreat here in England. And, uh, yeah, I got together with these two guys, really cool dudes. And we were in a room together, the three of us. And we came up with this, I had a groove, we went with it, you know, and then, um, we just out of nowhere, we just ended up singing these lyrics and the song is basically, I mean, I always tell everybody it's about nothing. It's not about nothing. It's, about, <laughs> you know, when everything gets a bit too much, <laughs> right, right. You know, when everything gets a bit too much, you know, like the pressure's building, you know, it's that boiling point. Yeah, the well, best we thing can to all, do to get rid of it is to go walking, man, you know. So for those of our listeners who are, are not aware of who your father is, your father is Lonnie Donegan, who was a super infamous person over in the UK, and um, you are his son, that's right i mean if you want a brief history about that um um his first hit which was i mean completely by accident he was just skiffle was was the name of the uh, of the the genre uh which better known today really is is Amer americana wow. and um yeah so i mean deck him out it was basically um you know three chords in the truth you know basically is what it was you know and it was a lot of woody guthrie songs lead belly songs and that had never been you know played in the uk so my dad's playing this stuff rock online was a big hit he had to go and play it in the u.s as well and um you know because it reached number eight in the states in 1956 and and because they had that 
um, what do you call it? The uh, musicians union rules in the uh, American Association for Musicians rules where you couldn't have one artist going one way across the Atlantic without another one coming the other way to keep the equilibrium. So my dad had to come over to the U.S. and the U.S. powers that be chose Buddy Holly to go the other way. Oh, wow. You know, so wow. those two did a, an exchange. So how did yeah, that affect you? Know, you? And dad, dad. Cool. Uh, how, how did, how did that being raised me? by um, a well, I, I'm somebody in the music who was in the business? The <laughs> what? Um, well, I mean, I didn't I didn't realize it until, you know, I was, I don't know, maybe double digits, you know, 11, 12, somewhere like that. How big dad was because, I mean, I'm hanging around with, you know, people that I'd known since I was a kid, but then when you realize that, oh wait, this guy's you know the guitarist from Queen. This is you know <laughs> Brian is Brian May. Okay, I get this now. Um, you know, and they're telling me things like, dude, man, if it wasn't for your dad, you know, we wouldn't be doing this. You know, Joe Cocker said, if it wasn't for listening to Rock Island Line, I wouldn't know what to do with my career. You know, um, and it's 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 really cool you know for me i was massively proud i mean i used to grow up watching dad on stage anyway and i was proud of him anyway but then when you people are telling you these things then you you know you're just like bursting with pride so did your dad um, ever discourage you from going down this path no uh no not at all uh he was happy because it meant that he, he had you know he, he could coach me in a lot of ways, you know, <laughs> yes. so he gave me, he, he gave me singing lesson, you know, cause if I wanted to be an accountant, he would have been, all right, well, we'll have to find somebody else for you to talk to, you know, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it was, there was never a question in my mind what I was going to do. I loved music. And uh, the, the only thing that dad was kind of surprised by was the fact that I actually ended up being a piano player. You know, he didn't believe me. He bought me a guitar. And I was like, well, thanks, Dad. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> well. Um, but then, he, then he, brought, he bought me a cheap keyboard and he said, well, you know, have a go with this and see how it works out. And I taught myself some stuff by ear and he was like, okay, you're serious. So he got me some lessons. And nice. I became his keyboard player. Oh, that's awesome. So you have all these memories, which is phenomenal. I, I can't even imagine... <laughs> being in your house and seeing all these people come in and not make that connection until later, you know? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't, when you're a kid, you see these people coming in and they're like, Hey Pete. And I, hey Brian, how's it going? You know, and it's, <laughs> it's not a, you don't, you don't see it. You just see these as, you know, people because that's what they are. You know, uh, there are people that have become extremely successful in their field. You know, and they're very good at what they do, but they're still people like you, like you and I. You know, right? Um, right. And I, I've seen a different side to people as well. I mean, I remember people telling me that you know about Van Morris, and they're going, "Oh my God, he's so difficult to deal with." And I'm going, "Really? He seems kind of cool to me." Uh, but then, because of my dad, I see a different side to people. Okay, but who can say that, Peter? Really? <laughs> <laughs> a handful of people. <laughs> Not too many uh, people. Know, maybe can Stella say McCartney. That. <laughs> <laughs> So 2018, you were on the UK's Voice. Yeah, I was. I, you know, took a wrong turn down a corridor, ended up on a set, and there you go. Um, <laughs> you know, so it was. I, um, yeah, I was scouted by that uh, because I'd actually been doing country to country festival here in the UK. Okay. Um, and and doing my stuff from my Superman EP, which was recorded in Nashville. And, you know, I put the stuff up on YouTube and then I got a phone call while I was driving um, actually to the songwriter retreat I was telling you about before in Glastonbury. Right. And somebody said to me, he says, hi, hi, I'm Alicia. I'm from The Voice. You know, and I was like, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, we saw sure, your stuff on YouTube Alicia. and we thought, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, okay. Um, and she's like, you know, could you? I said, well, I'm driving now. Can I call you back? And I'm, th I'm looking at this and I thought, I'm going to have to Google this because it's probably just a spam call. Somebody's having me on here. Right, right. And I was like, okay, no, they, they sent me the emails and everything. And I was like, all right, this is this is legit. So I went for the five rounds of callbacks, you know, and it was cool because they're, and especially in the UK, they're expanding uh, into country a lot more, or I should say again, because in the eighties, it was huge here again, you know, and then uh, because of Garth Brooks, you know, it was huge again in the nineties. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's having a massive comeback because it's way more mainstream. Uh, now you mean like Lady A, where they you know were coming right. out with Need You Now. I mean that was all over the charts. Um, 
you know, Taylor Swift with all of her early stuff, you know, which was real country. And that was all over the charts. And I remember telling people, you know, you, you know, you like country music and they're going, no, I don't country sucks. And I'm like, well, how come you like this? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, but that's pop. I go, no, it's, it's, it's really not. <laughs> So there was a performance um, on The Voice with, uh, you did a duet with Tom Jones. And from an outsider looking in, it appeared to be very emotional. Um, well, it, it was. It was. I mean, there's, there's a history behind that. I mean, I went on the show, obviously, and I was hoping Tom would turn because there's a connection between my dad and Tom. Uh, as in they knew each other. Right. I never knew Tom. I'd never met him before. But um, my dad and Tom knew each other because my dad, um, again, was a big inspiration for Tom. Um, and because of dad, Tom was singing the blues and stuff, which is where he started off at. And um, Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. You know, well, because my dad introduced Americana music, American music into the UK. And that's where a lot of people have first heard uh, Lead Belly songs, then that led them to listen to John Lee Hooker and, and, and you know, all these kind of people. So um, anyway, I mean, I'm on the show and, and my dad and Tom had um, not only that connection, but it was the fact that my dad had written a song called I'll Never Fall In Love Again, which Tom picked up on and ended up doing, you know, and it was like a top 10 hit for Tom Jones back in 68, right. I think it was. Right. And Elvis Presley you did know, the song too. Yeah, well, that was in his last album, wasn't it? From Memphis yep. Presley, uh, uh, from Elvis Presley Boulevard, Memphis, Tennessee. Right. Um, and of course, Dad was hugely proud of that. You know, hugely proud. Um, so, you know, I'm on the show, and I, Tom turns for me, which is great. You know, because he tends to favour the sort of more country sounding artists. And when I when I spoke to Mark, uh, which is his son and manager, after the show, you know, after all this had happened, and he said, "Oh, yeah, no, Dad, you, you know." Uh, Tom actually thought you sound like Lonnie Donegan a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> kind of liked your voice and turned for you. And then when you said your name's Peter Donegan, he was going to go off in the story. Oh yeah. Well, if you're any relation to Lonnie, he says he was a big friend of mine and blah, blah, blah. So when I said, no, that's my dad, he was like, what really? Uh, okay. <laughs> you know, it took him, it, it knocked him for six for a second, which people can see on the YouTube footage, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, it was, um, I suggest everybody take a look at that. Cause it's pretty cool. The it, look it on Tom's cool. I mean, when the, he was the, the singing only, with you, yeah. Well, it's it's the couple of things with that. I mean, f for me, I could have been a blubbering mess if it wasn't for the <laughs> fact that what was edit what was edited out was the bit where he asks me to do the show, the, the song, you know, and I say yeah, sure. Um, and then I turn to the band and I say, okay, do you guys know it? And they go, well, not well enough to just go and play it. And I was like, right. And the MD said to me, he says, but you know, you do it, right? I said, yeah. He says, well, you can play my piano. I was like, oh, okay then. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, I said to Tom, I said, what key do you want to do it in? You know, I said, I do it in D. I know that you originally did it in E. So I don't mind which way you want to do it. And he said, oh, we'll do it in D. He said, I want to sit down. I said, all right. <laughs> You know. Yeah, I want to have a seat. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the guy guy was, you know, just about to turn 80 at the time. So if he wants to sit down, sit yeah, down. Yeah, absolutely. You know? <laughs> He's into it. All right. Um, well, yeah, I want to talk about... It went from there. About Thank You, Texas, which is the, the song that got you on our show. The song won an award uh, at the Texas... Sounds International Country Music Awards. You won Best Male Vocal for this song. Yeah, it was it was a really lovely surprise, um, and it was it was a massive highlight for me. It's the first award I've ever won. Oh wow! Um, and, and I got managed to get two of them at the same festival. You know, um, if you want a history about the song, I mean, again, that was written uh, at a songwriting retreat, but this time in Lubbock, Texas. Now I'd never been to Texas before. And uh, I'd been away from the U.S. longer than I wanted to be, you know. And when I'd done the long flight from London to Austin, then I had to pick up a rental and do the five-and-a-half-hour drive from Austin to Lubbock through the night. Um, and a brutal uh, trip. I, <laughs> it was a brutal trip. Um, 
<laughs> interrupted by a drunk lady at the rental stand who was trying to get into her car with two toddlers. Oh. And she was oh, no. really drunk. Which which added time to everything because the, the guy who was behind the desk said to me, he says, do you mind waiting while I call the cops? I said, no, I do not. You might be said, related better- to Mad Cat. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to say there. Man. <laughs> He's got luck like that. <laughs> yeah. Ain't it true? <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I mean, when you're on the road, you see all sorts of stuff, you know. Um, but the, the sentiment behind that song is is pretty autobiographical because I got in the car. I was f- feeling, you know, a, a little bad tempered, you know, because it was a long journey. I hadn't slept where I usually sleep on a plane and all these things that were uh, accumulating, you know. Um, and uh, I got I got in the car. I started driving. I hit the the well, it wasn't a motorway, but the, you know the the road. And uh, I did down the the window, and I was hit by the Texas air, the breeze, you know, in the night. And it just kind of warmed and wrapped around me. And it was like that feeling of, okay, you're home. I got you, you know? And, and that's where this came in, you know, it kind of made me a bit teary eyed. So during the whole retreat, I had this thing I wanted to write. Thank you, Texas. And I'd also been listening a lot to Bruce Springsteen, especially to, um, uh, tougher than the rest, you know? And I wanted to write something which was a strong strong. Now, fortunately for me, the next day I was um, grouped up with two Texans, uh, Jerry Serrano from Lubbock and then Maddie Davis, uh, who's also from Texas. And she was on NBC's The Voice about five years ago, too. Mm. Um, so, so there was a connection with us there. And we got on like a house on fire, you know, the three of us. And I said, guys, I want to write this. And they said, yep, cool. <laughs> and so you so, did. And and so we did, and it went down. It went down really well at the retreat. And the first night we recorded it, uh, sorry, didn't record it. But the first night we performed it, because at these retreats you write the song during the day and you perform it in front of everybody that night. Oh wow! And we no got to perform there. it that night. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, this night we had more pressure because we were actually at Buddy Holly's old high school in front of the, uh, <laughs> the students who were part of their performing arts section. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to take a break and let our listeners hear this fantastic song. Thank You, Texas by Peter Donegan, and we'll be right back with the rest of the interview. Thank you, Texas, for bringing me home. Hearts are blessed here, ready to roll. So before I hit the road Let's lift our heads up and tilt our hats Thank you, Texas Austin, 9 p.m. Five hours to go Headlights dancing down the black and road I was killed by the southern wind and a blanket of stars. Love was bound. Wait on the wheelie on the radio. Yeah, I'm strumming along and I'm ready. Thank you, Texas. 
I'm home. And we are back on the balcony show with our interviewee, Peter Donegan, calling us from across the pond. So, Peter, I want to ask you, man, you know, it's, uh, did you ever feel like early on, like coming out of the gate, that country was absolutely going to be your thing? Or did you feel like you just wanted to, you know, was there, did you try any other genres out before you landed into this? No, I didn't. I mean, I, um, I I ended up getting sidetracked into doing a lot of my dad's stuff because here in the UK, that's, you know, a lot of people want the nostalgia, you know, and I, I couldn't get a record deal without doing just covers of my dad's stuff. Right. So I did that once and uh, I left it at that. And then I'm completely independent now. Um, and this, that's the major reason why really, you know, but no, no country's already always been it for me. Cause if you, if you were around my house, when I was growing up, my dad had an obsession with Waylon and Willie and the highway men. And, you know, and I was immediately hooked. I mean, it was listening to the, um, uh, which one was it now? Is it spirit is the, the album, which is full of like loads of little sort of Latin, you know, sort of Mexican uh, interludes and stuff like that. And I just fell in love with, with Willie Nelson. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, saw, I saw, I saw, Willie's I saw. like the ch- chillest <laughs> human being on the planet. Funny story. I met, I met Willie Nelson when I was a, when I was a young kid working at a ski resort and we were doing a summer concert series and I was in charge of bringing Willie his beer. And oh, wow. <laughs> I cracked his beer open for him and I had set it down and in that moment, I didn't realize that as I turned my back and Willie had his back turned, a bee had landed, went inside the beer. And then Willie turns around and grabs it and takes Aww. a swig out of it and gulps the bee and stings him in the mouth. <gasps> he had to perform that night with a swollen tongue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Do you see what Ann means <laughs> now? How things happen to Mad Cat? <laughs> I am the dark yep. cloud. Yeah. <laughs> I am the dark. I got growled at by Winona Judd for crying out loud, all because I said hello to her dog. Oh, yeah, and she, and she just really? sat there, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really weird. It was really weird. Her dog just came up that and started is- sniffing my foot, and I look up and I, she's just sitting there glaring and scowling at me. <laughs> Maybe she's, she's been waiting for that dog to sniff her foot for years. It never happened. And she just went out and sniffed yours right off the bat, you know. <laughs> seems, seems about right. So, yeah. damn it, why won't he sniff mine? <laughs> we can definitely hang. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Peter, you're, if you're ever in New York or Philly area, we're hanging. Oh, for sure. Oh, that's funny. For sure, I'm trying to get myself hooked up at the wineries, man. I would, I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to be there. Okay, so what's new or what's coming up with you? You have, uh, you just released this single. I know we're going to be listening to a new single you got coming up. We will indeed. Just a flower. And, uh, just a flower. Yeah, and that's another co-write. Um, and that's the first song I ever wrote at a songwriting retreat. And the, the reason I wrote that, um, well, there's, there's two reasons. First of all, we were sitting looking at each other, the three of us, because we'd never done this before. And we're going, oh, my God, we're going to write about it. I don't know. Should we write about this? And then we we're overanalyzing it. And it came to lunchtime. We still didn't have two chords together. And we're like, holy crap, what are we going to do? Um, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, <laughs> I was because I suffer really bad from hay fever, but only in the UK. <laughs> Um, and I was, cause we're in Glastonbury and it's fields and it's full of the sort of, you know, the rapeseed plant. And I, I'm really bad with that. So there I am looking like I've gone eight rounds of Mike Tyson, you know, <laughs> half a year is the whole thing. Right. And by this point in time, I have taken nasal sprays with antihistamines in it. And I've also taken three, three of the one a day, you know, uh, pastels. Um, and I am now pretty off with the fairies. <laughs> <laughs> on this stuff, you know, you know, you could you could have pricked me in the leg, you know, with a needle, and I'd have been gone. Cool, you know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, yeah, nice. What else you got? Um, you know, so <laughs> I kind of zoned out for a minute, and now I've been inspired by my one of my younger brothers, my middle brother, who lives in in West Palm Beach, because his my nephew, his his little boy, had asked him a question. 
because he'd suddenly realized that some of his friends don't always look like him. You know, some of them are, you know, some of them are black, you know, some of them are white, you know, some of them are, are speaking Spanish. Well, how come they speak Spanish and we speak English and how come he's black and I'm white? And it was a, a deep question coming from a six year old. Yeah, very. So, you know, so my brother called me to say how he handled this because he was like, man, did I do this right? <laughs> I'm like, really? You're asking me? <laughs> um, so, you know. <laughs> You know, well, I'm the older brother, you know, so he, it was kind of normal that he came to me. But he said, hey, son, we got to you got to think of it as, you know, we're all flowers. You know, some of us are different types of flowers. You know, some of us are different colors, different smells, different lengths, you know, and we all, you know, do things in different ways. He said, but at the end of the day, at the core, the core of it was we're all flowers. We're all human beings, you know, and I was like. I like that. I like that. And I say, if you don't mind, I think I'm going to run with that for a song. And I kind of kept it, you know, in my little book of notes. So I just grabbed my book of notes, went with it. And I said to the two other guys, I said, look, how's this? We are all just a flower. And it was that song, you know, and they went, yep, that's good. Let's go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> so in desperation, <laughs> but uh, turned oh, yeah. out really well. So, well, listen. It did. Uh, your website, peterdonegan.com. I want to encourage our listeners yeah. to go check it out. Check out his YouTube channel. Um, music, I think, is available on every... Just just Google his name. He'll come up. Um, oh, yeah. But even on the website, there's a, there's a music page, and you can select where you want to listen to. I mean, because it's on Deezer, it's on Amazon, it's on yeah, you're Spotify everywhere. and Apple Music. Oh, yeah. I, I've been everywhere, and now I am everywhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, I want to thank you, Peter, in all sincerity, for uh, spending some time with us here on this show. And I wish you much continued success. And uh, is there any final shout-out to anybody? A final shout-out to anybody? Hmm. There's a few people I'd like to shout-out, but I don't think we have enough time. <laughs> I think uh, for now, because I mean, we're we're talking about being on the East Coast here, aren't we? Right. No, so all I'll, over the so world. I'll, all over the world. Oh my goodness. Um, in that case, I always give a shout out to my wife because she's inspired me to write so many damn songs. Um, because with no, listen, I mean, I am very lucky to have the woman that I have because I think most most women, from the, what I've seen, you know, wives, they want the guy to stay at home and and, and this kind of thing, you know. Why do you have to go on the road so much? You know, where she's like, get the hell out of here. You know, <laughs> but uh, no, I, all jokes aside, she, you know, believes in me when I've not believed in myself and thought of giving it up and God bless her for it. And that's why I'm doing it. All nice. right. Very nice. Very nice. All right. We're going to end things tonight with. Yeah. Just a flower. God. <laughs> I got to do that again. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to end things tonight with just a flower. Thank you, Peter Don again. Keep in touch. Thank you so much, guys. Take care of yourself. And all the best to you guys and stay safe. Thank, Thank you. you. Take Cheers, care. Bro. See you soon. Bye bye.
This is what she'd say We are all just a flower Come a small Selma Tower We all come in many colors Some brighter than the others No matter where you come from We're as good as one another Mother, daughter, sister, brother We are all just a flower Eyes open wide, questions are all that she sees. She's in life over the fence, just doesn't make sense. Why don't they sound like me? So I sat her on my knee. Told her what Mama told me that we're all just a flower. Some are small and some are tower. We all come in many colors, some brighter than the others. No matter where we come from, we're as good as one another. Mother, daughter. She said, what makes me different? What makes me unique? Yeah, Daddy, what's it going to be? I said, let's wait and see. Cause we're all just a flower Some are small and some are tower We all come in many colors Some brighter than the others No matter where we come from We're as good as one another Father, daughter, sister, brother We are all just a flower Thank you. Thank you. And now it's time for Indie Radar with Bo Summer. All right. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news or even come across negative, but I'm not digging this. I don't know. Spotify recently announced they're going to be doing a trial where they're going to be giving artists an opportunity to promote their songs on Spotify to more listeners. But there's a catch. They have to agree up front that the royalty payment is going to be a little lower. Now, there's no details. Uh, we got some smirks going on in the studio. Um, they really haven't given too many details other than artists are going to be able to select their tracks that Spotify will quote favor when recommending new music to users. Um, and again, that wonderful word algorithms, you know, Spotify, whatever their algorithms are determine or help you decide what you should listen to based on what you already listen to, if that makes sense. So anyway, artists labels, they're going to be able to make specific tracks show up more often in these recommendations in exchange for lower royalty payments, as if they're not low already. Spotify is claiming this formula will ensure the service was open to smaller artists. I really don't get that. But for now, so far, it looks like the test is only going to be applying to Spotify radio and autoplay formats. This has nothing to do with any kind of guarantee having to do with playlists or being put on a playlist. But just this is 
definitely worth something to be on your radar as an artist. And uh, don't start clicking yes and agreeing before you truly understand what you're agreeing to. But it just seems like, man, these artists are just getting wailed on this year. I don't know. Maybe it'll be a positive thing. Let's give them a chance, see what happens in the next couple of weeks, months, see how this all plays out. And I don't, I don't know. know. Anything that the term less bothers me. Yeah. yeah. The, only, <laughs> the only good possibility here is that maybe your audience reach is going to be elevated so that if you're truly a DIY, you know, DIY and you're organic and you're you're growing organically, that's going to maybe help you um just reach more people. And and what I mean by that is there's two artists and you know cuz I've spoken about these two bands that I absolutely love their music. One of them was signed, they've toured the world, they're huge in the UK. Um they've got I don't know, less than 100,000 listeners. Then you have another band, indie artist, never signed, more local to this one state in the Midwest, and they've got, I don't know, over 300,000 listeners. So, I don't know. Think about that for a minute. Maybe it'll help the band that's got the lesser monthly listener, and it'll expand your audience. I just want to know. know more. So, yeah, uh, keep us posted on that. I Bo. definitely yeah, will. I I, this came across, and I was like, ah, come on. We'll I'm not, see. I'm not a fan of anything kind of making a choice for you about what you should be listening to. I agree with and that. I, I, that's the part of it that with these with these algorithms that that makes things feel funny for me. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, okay, cool. Like sometimes, yes, like especially like when I'm on YouTube, you know, something will come up. It's making the choice for me, but I'm not necessarily a fan of having things making choices for me. You know, just because, okay, if I'm searching a song, okay, and I happen to listen to that one song, now you're going to send me all this other stuff. Like, maybe I was just looking up this song to try to understand why this particular song was bad. I'm now just I'm gonna tired of being bombarded constantly. Yes. Yeah. I don't Sorry. know. It's weird. But I, I, I fully agree with you both. I agree. But you know what? This, again, it's a company. It's... They're looking to make money. Yeah, but I get that too. But Spotify, it's a big company and it's made a boatload of money. And now they're now oh, they're forcing talking. this thing on you and now we're gonna pay you less. You're welcome. You know, yeah, and I'm like, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I have a I have a problem. And I don't know that. if it's you know, if it's gonna be a mandatory, you know, for what the wording that they're using is this it's a promotional recording royalty yeah, rate. But see, there's that fishing stuff again. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they throw that pole in the water and they see how many fish it catches and yep. then Yeah, but it's if a, all the fish jump in the net, then yeah. they make other fish that were just minding their own business out in the vast ocean. It's like, don't do it, Charlie. Don't do it, Charlie. You already did it. You're screw it. Let's go with it. Yeah. And yeah, there you so have it. There you go. All right. I'd like to remind you that The Balcony Show is sponsored by Soundmind Recording Studios for all your musical production needs. Check them out at soundmindrecordingstudio.com. Mad Cats, Mad Tracks. And today's Mad Cats, Mad Tracks. Following this country theme is I Found Me by Kelsey Bouvet. I got to tell you, I like it. She's got a sweet voice. So sit down, give it a listen. Here we go. Cliche, but ain't that the beauty of it? We make it work like it's nothing.
see silhouette with no regret in the hearsay It's a silent thread inside my head But ain't that the beauty of it? We can make sure we don't stop for nothing Let's make it till we break it Then I realized that's when I found me Another kick-ass song here on the Balcony Show. Thanks, Mad Cat. Cool Word. Mad Tracks. All right, you two. How about one more insult before we finish this off? One more insult. Let's see. Um, you know? <laughs> you know about the mom jokes? I make many. <laughs> and, you know... I would think something would be a little bit more harsh than this, but in the vein of mom jokes, I like it. I think it sounds funny. So, the Shakespearean your mom joke. Villain, I have done thy mother. (laughs) Perfect. All right, Bo, give us the last (laughs) and final one. A quote? Oh, I don't know. Out of my sight. Thou dost infect my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> See? So you're set up for Thanksgiving. <laughs> and I want to thank Peter Donegan for being a part of our show. Super talent. Can't wait to hear his next album coming. And hopefully we'll get to hang out with him. So with that, I'm going to bid you adieu. Say goodnight to you guys. We're going to end things tonight with a song from... Brandon Maddox, Dixie Chaser. Good night, everybody from the Balcony Show. We'll catch you next week. Good Uh, night. Have a good one. That's what's up. Good friend told me. New York City is a sight to see The girls are all about a yee-haw Of a hey all deep south backwoods draw Made me a beeline To the bright lights of pool and lit one night Found a spot called the Lone Star a City slickers take on a country bar Girls gathered round to hear me talk I had them roped in like a cattle call But a down-home voice knocked me out Like I had about four more rounds Like a sweet Kentucky bourbon she got my pulse is working, smooth as southern comfort Hot as white lightning, flowing from a steel in the feet My pine smoke, in little vixen from below The Mason-Dixon, I'm on the trail of this top shelf Hundred proof heartbreaker She's a shot of Dixie And I'm a Dixie chaser Y'all, it's been grand I took that 
that southern belt by the hand Raced out the door to my 4 by 4 And was down on that beat up Ford Radio rocking, horns were honking Parked in the spot the cops worked off Hit a hotel then grabbed the key And in room 303 Like a sweet Kentucky bourbon she got My pulse of work in Smooth as southern comfort Hot as white lightning Flowing from the steel in the Piedmont pine smoke and little vixen from below The Mason Dixon I'm on the trail of this top shelf Hundred proof heartbreaker She's a shot of Dixie And I'm a Dixie chaser Southern Comfort, all right.